I was amazed to find that uh, I recorded another video and forgot to shut it off. So rather than go all the way through that process of editing and everything else, because some of the editing that I have to do on a PC is a lot more complicated than it should be, and I just don't like to mess around with it. So I try to make them as easy as possible, and I can spend my time doing other things rather than editing videos of all things. So praise the Lord, we're probably going to record it again. In the years that we live and breathe and move and have our being, we see things that are habit forming, that become habits or that happen every year at this time of year. In some ways, a lot of people get excited and worked up and they generate a lot of encouragement and a lot of good feelings and warm, positive atmosphere, you know, kind of like when you walk into a house, you know, and you see all the festive lights and you see things that are just decorated and you just go, wow, man, it's just kind of cool, you know, or, or say you go for a walk at night, you know, and you walk along, you know, a dark city street or a country road even, and suddenly you see out there, there's this house that's lit up and it's got all these lights on it it's got lights that have been completely you know done up in all the you know beauty and wonder and excitement and in the imagination of the person decorating the home and you can't help but feel a little bit ooh, cool look at that or ah or you go along and there's some christmas music playing in the air maybe for some of you you go oh not another christmas song but for other people that maybe aren't hearing it every day, they they kind of go, yeah, jingle bells, yeah, what child is this, yeah, and they feel good. So there's that at this time of year that should be what we experience, you know, in the Christmas season. This is a season of Christian and Christmas joy, of a of an enjoyment of the fact that yes, Jesus was born, yes, Jesus did in fact come into the world, and God sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that the good news was that God said, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people, that born unto you in this day in the city of David, behold, Christ the Savior, and he shall save his people from sins, and you know, he'd be a light to the Gentiles, and he'd be the salvation of the world, you know. And he went out to proclaim it, and sent his angels, and the humorous thing, or maybe the sad thing, was that the only people that got the first gospel message was shepherds tending their flock. Interesting. Interesting. But not only does at this time of season we know why and what and how, and we see the joy of children as they sit on Santa's lap and they want to talk who's naughty or nice. And, let them know that, oh, I did good, really, I have. You know, and enjoy the wonder in Sunday, or Sunday, in the, in the morning that Christmas comes and they tear open their presents and delight in getting those things and spend family time and family enjoyment or even sometimes maybe some people alone still enjoying themselves and having a present or two or even just wishing and praying and helping someone else along their way at this time of year. But regardless of how you do it, we know why and what and where, and we know all about Christmas, so don't let anyone try to tell you or steal your joy or make you feel something you don't feel. You don't have to be up, although you shouldn't try to bring someone down because you don't feel like it. What you should do is recognize that at this time of year, it is for Christmas. It is for Santa Claus. It is for Hanukkah. It is for Kwanzaa. It is for the holiday. And like any other holiday, there's some people that get holiday depressions, you know, from not having money or not having the Lord or not having Jesus in their life or not having peace, not having love, not having joy. Me. <laughs> I got peace. I got love. I got joy. I got 
Christmas stuff. You know, I got Hanukkah stuff. You know, I got, well, maybe I don't have Kwanzaa, but since Kwanzaa uses all the other stuff, I got that too. You know, I know what Advent is. You know, I know what a midnight mass is. I know what many people do on Boxer Day. You know, I know what all the celebrations are. I know what supposed pagan rituals there might have been in bringing the bells that wasn't Christmas trees. That doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. <laughs> I don't know how people got so carried away that they got deceived into thinking somehow the Christmas tree was related to something pagan. That's dumb. <laughs> Go talk to the pagans. Even they don't think it's related to Christmas. <laughs> I mean, what better person to say, uh, you think that's what we do? I mean, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a pagan ritual? You know, I mean, <laughs> that's not the kind of tree that they <laughs> they decorate. And that's not the way they decorate it. <laughs> no offense. But, anyways, if you want to go see Druids, go to England. But anyway, the point being is that whether you rejoice or whether you're saddened or whether you're sorrowful, I myself, personally, don't particularly like this time of year. I always have kind of a down time. And I choose not to be down. I choose to be rather all around those things that make for encouragement. I choose to be around those things that make for joy at this time of year. I choose to be up and lifted up because I don't feel like part of the season. And so I don't go to Christmas celebrations too often. I mean, I've, you know, if my family sees this, they'll probably kind of get an insight. But, you know, I went to my, my wife's sister's house for Christmas one year, and she's married to an uh, Englishman. And we had kind of a Winslow's Christmas, you know, it was kind of fun. We put on the hats, you know, and I did all the typical English traditions. And that was fun, you know, we had a lot of fun, you know. Had a blast, you know, we had fun. You know, and it was like, okay, that was cool. You know, and I've been in Jerusalem for Christmas, and I saw the ringing of the bells in Jerusalem. I saw Bethlehem, you know, at Christmas. I saw, you know, nativities being done all over the place. I saw Greek Orthodox, Jewish Orthodox, everybody together, all together in the city of God at Christmas. I lived there. <laughs> Not too easy. You know, and I've seen that. You know, and I enjoyed it, you know, and I've been in California where, you know, we, we look around and about the biggest thing that we decorate are yachts <laughs> for the sailing of the ships go by. <laughs> well, it's California after all. What did you expect? Christmas trees? <laughs> I mean, on the East Coast, they have the Rockefeller Center, you know, and the Christmas tree and, you know, the pond outside and they go skating. Well, in California, we have the boats, <laughs> you know, we go out in the ocean, you know, and celebrate, we have palm trees lit up, you know, but well, a little different story when it's all warm in California, you, know? you don't have snow, but I just enjoyed it, and I enjoy it, you know, for such as it is, and, you know, I spent time with my family, who's not safe, you know, went to Utah and saw my wife's kids, and, you know, they have their little family tradition, you know, and they, they do their little thing, you know, and they, they kind of have this little thing going on the night before and in the morning, you know. And I, I looked and I watched, you know, and enjoyed with them their their aspects of Christmas, you know. And, you know, I, of course, being that I'm a Christian, you know, inside, you know, the Lord speaking to me, I, I kind of notice things, you know, that, yeah, you know, kind of, you know, Jesus seems a little absent from the circumstances, but that's okay. That's their Christmas. And I've been to Hanukkah, you know, where even I, setting up for a, a presentation in Climate Falls, lit the menorah, you know. It's actually not a menorah, it's a Hanukkah, which is kind of like a bad example of a menorah because it's really not biblical. It's a matter of fact, kind of off the walls. But anyways, Hanukkah is are kind of cool, you know. Some people try to make it into something it's not, like trying to make it into Jesus. Well, you know, kind of make something that's not into Jesus. Otherwise, you wind up with a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus. And that's kind of what you do when you put a Hanukkah trying to say that that's Jesus. No, it's not. It never was been. Never was, never has been, never will be. 
Feast of Dedication, when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, was with a seven branch menorah, and it was a giant one that was right there in Jerusalem. And when they were lighting it for the Feast of Dedication, he stood there at it, you know, and spread his hands, so to speak, and said, I am, you know, and used the typical priestly blessing from maybe not rabbinical, maybe not the one you read in the books, but he used a blessing. So the point being is that it's not about the exact sciences of the holidays or how you feel, but what you do with it that makes this time of year up to you to enjoy or to participate in. Because, you see, this year, as well as every year, you're going to be involved in the same thing happening at the same time every year. So it's up to you to make it or break it the way you want to. If you choose to instill it in your life, you have all kinds of things around your house that I do to celebrate it in some small ways. And this year I'm staying home by myself as my wife goes to spend time with her children and people that want to celebrate Christmas, you know, in a very morning tear up present kind of way, you know, and me, I'll probably sleep in <laughs> or I'll be on the internet with you. But you don't have to be miserable. In other words, you don't have to be down and out. I've been there, you know, I've, I've gone out on bike rides on Christmas Eve, singing at the top of my lungs songs from from Godspell, prepare ye the way of the Lord, you know. And, you know, shouting to the heavens that Jesus is coming and spending quality time alone with my God. You know, loved it. <laughs> Might go do it again. <laughs> but it's really up to you what you do. God doesn't care. You know, it's not a holy day. Sorry, you know. You're holy. It's not. What makes it holy is you, not it making you into being come holiness or vice versa. Somehow you make the day holy. No. You are holy and if you're in it, then the day is holy as you're there. As you walk away, it's just a day. Because every day is the day the Lord has made. Every day. And the day you live in, this day, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice to be glad in it. And come Christmas Day, it will be the day that the Lord has made it, I will rejoice and be glad in it. So, you can be glad even though you're down and out, or if you're suffering, or if you're in disease, or if you're in some kind of funk because of the time of year, because you're not the only one. Hey, I'm, I'm there with you. I understand. Believe me. I'm kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. it's foggy today, figures. But you know, even as I was talking to you, the fog seemed to be lifting and starting to burn away. And you know what's going to happen? The sun's going to come out. Perfect love. Oh Lord, give us that perfect love of you that casts out all fear. Never let yourselves fear anybody or anything. Never be pressured into something or someone, but always do as the Lord leads you. No fear of my failing you, for I will never fail you, nor leave you, nor forsake you. No fear that your faith will fail you, for I have given you my gift of faith. No fear of poverty or loneliness. Behold, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. No fear of not knowing the way. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who greatest not to give it to all men liberally. No fear of others. Be not dismayed by their faces, O thou worm, Jacob, for I am with you. No fear of their misunderstanding. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. But my children, this absolute casting out of fear is a result of a perfect love. A perfect love of me and my father. Speak to me about everything. Listen to me at all times. And feel my tender nearness, substituting at once some thought of me for the fear of what you thought you should fear. The powers of evil watch you as a besieging force would watch a guarded city. The object being to always find some weak spot and attack that and so gain an entrance into you. So evil lurks around you and seeks to surprise you in some fear. This fear may have been but a small one, but it affords an evil or weak spot of attack and entrance. So then it coming so then it comes in, rushing despondency and doubt of you and so many other sins. For fear is a sin and in a sense is a lack of faith. My beloved children, for that perfect love of me, that indeed casts out all fear, come to me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
when you need to walk away from the celebrations or the shopping or the busyness or the time of year, then turn it around in some way. Turn to, once again, the Lord. And just have a quiet time. Go take a nap. Go have a rest. If you're a smoker, go have a cigarette. <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> or, you know, whatever may be that somehow changes the focus of the attention of your spirit somewhere else other than being despondent or discordant or at disease. But rather, in a simple way, in a simple solution, come unto the source of living water and Jesus will give you to drink. For he has said that no one that comes to me will I in no wise cast out. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest.